Welcome to Richard and Greg, a channel dedicated to discussion, debate and argument on a whole array of topics. Today, Greg and Richard discuss the latest coronavirus figures, pointing out why they could be grossly inaccurate and also explore the serious possibility of how there could be as many as 1 to 2 million UK deaths and 8 to 10 million US deaths before this pandemic is over. So let's take a listen. Welcome to Richard and Greg. The date is Thursday, the 2nd of April 2020, and the time is 18.30 GMT plus one. And we are looking, obviously, at an update on the coronavirus figures. And what is quite interesting is that in the United Kingdom, with cases having surpassed 30,000 and deaths well above 2,000, the British Prime Minister has promised now to conduct more tests on the population, with the Health Minister promising that his ultimate goal is to achieve 100,000 tests a day. Equally interesting is that Germany is already declaring that it's currently providing 50,000 tests a day. So it will be quite illuminating to find out, off controversially, Greg, how many tests are being carried out in America, and if he knows, in Italy, and how, particularly, and something that I've noticed, the death rate seems much higher in some countries than they do in others. So let's go over to Controversially Greg and say good evening and please give us an update. Good evening all. Um, I'm feeling rather pleased with myself. Um, almost a week ago, I predicted that we would top a million cases reported and we would top 50,000 deaths by the weekend. Uh, well, we still got four hours to go and we're only seven thousand short of the million. We've already topped the 50,000. We're almost at 51,000 deaths. But we have already established um, conclusively in our various podcasts that these figures mean very, very little. They are so wildly wrong in some cases as to be purely an academic exercise in uh, how to lie with statistics. Uh, America, for instance, is quoting 233,246 cases so far, but they haven't got any tests in any quantity being done. They only have 1.3 million test kits for the 360 million Americans. So hardly anybody has been tested. They don't know how many cases they've got. Does this include people who have self-isolated at home? Or does it not? Does it include people who are actually in hospital? Or not? Does it include um, people who are in nursing homes and frail care and the like, or not. So really, we haven't a clue what that figure actually means. We also don't know if included in the total deaths of 5,738, whether these are all the COVID-19 deaths or do they, like Germany, not include people who die of heart failure brought on by COVID? Or perhaps those who die with pleurisy. Though brought on by COVID, they had no proof of it. Therefore, it's not listed as a COVID death, like Russia, where now their new policy is to take all the people who have pleurisy or similar illness, whether geriatric pleurisy, uh, whether post-operative pleurisy, uh, whether 
they know what the cause of the pleurisy was or not, and put them all in the same hospital and not treat them um, as different. They've just got pleurisy. So what are these figures all about? Yeah, it's horrendous when you see that uh, Italy has had on its 115,000 cases, uh, the, well, nearest damn it, 14,000 deaths. And 760 people die today. Greg, is that about, is that about 10%? I, I haven't got the figures in front of me. Did you yeah, say... Roughly. And am I not... Four, right four, it's slightly over 10%. And it's am I not... Yeah. It's 14,000 of 115. Right. Uh, sorry, because I thought you said 150. And what about Britain? Because Britain is around 10%, isn't it? Um, Britain is currently running at near as damn it 10%. We have um, 33,718, call that 34,000. Um, and we have 2,921, mm. you can safely call 3,000. Um, so yeah, 10% um, ish is about right. Um, but this still brings up all sorts of disparities. Britain has had 43 cases per million of its population mm -hmm. um, that we're actually officially recording. And there again, we don't know if this includes people who've died at home, people who've died in nursing homes, or the homeless who have died in the street. We haven't a clue. And we don't know who is actually recorded as having the disease because it's admitted openly that we haven't tested that many people. Well, if we haven't tested them, how do we know they've got it? Mm. You know, half of them may have died of hiccups. I don't know. <laughs> or um, too much alcohol trying to um, provide themselves with solace in the, their tedium at home. However, there was the ind individual who twittered, uh, his tweet stated, uh, yesterday that it's been eight days or so that he's been um, at home and um, self-imposed quarantine with his family and he said he's learned so much about life in those eight days the one certain lesson he's learned is he's never going to retire <laughs> and I would imagine a boom industry at the end of this is going to be um, both um, maternity wear and divorce lawyers. Because it is putting a lot of strain on a lot of um, relationships. Yeah. Already it is being publicly announced and publicly um attempts to solve the problem as opposed to solve the problem uh, that there is an expectation of uh, domestic abuse being particularly high because um, locking an abuser in, in with his victim um, is a particular form of torture I would have thought. Um, but having said that Britain has 43 per million de uh, um, deaths uh, we have, on top of that, uh, Spain with 216 per million, France with 230 per million, and how does America come out with 17 per million? Or being federated, are some states just not recording things? Or are they using totally different fingers and toes to count on? Well, I think, Greg, some states and their governors have said there is nowhere near enough testing kits. And, of course, um, Donald Trump, President Trump, was it yesterday or today? Yesterday, I think, uh, demanded that one state actually undertake a lockdown because it's Republicans 
governor refused to do it. And he also stated that it would all be over by Easter. Mm. So I'm, I'm afraid there is so much misinformation going on here. But what I stress to everyone is that they remember a couple of things. One, in China, 21 million Chinese have cancelled their telephone contract. Now, in China, to move around and to obtain many essential services, it is essential that you have the given app on your phone, which is registered to you. Otherwise, you cannot move around the country. You can be stopped in the street, and if you haven't got that app and you're in the wrong area, you can be imprisoned. Yet 21 million people have surrendered their telephones. I wonder how many of those were because they died. Because I doubt anybody would do it voluntarily when it means so much to them. And the people in Wuhan are bemoaning the fact that they are having to wait for many hours in queues to collect the ashes of their relatives who died and the public public figure being bandied around in Wuhan is that between 42 and 50,000 people died in Wuhan alone. Now, to get 42,000 people to die and the central government only records 3,318 as having died and 21 million people have cancelled their phones, thereby appearing to have died. Somewhere, there are some figures wildly adrift. We also know um, from an American intelligence report and also from a great deal of anecdotal evidence, um, as in it took the Americans a very long time for their, Amer their intelligence uh, to catch up with common knowledge, that China had the disease for at least a month without announcing it to the rest of the world, thereby giving cause for it becoming a global pandemic. Because when it, they first had the escape of the virus from their research laboratory, having, we believe, obtained it, it from a re uh, by illicit means from a Canadian research laboratory that was working on um, trying to work out a vaccine in uh, Winnipeg. The research laboratory in China has been working on this as far as we can work out since about 2016, whether to enhance it or to uh, work out a vaccine or to work out a cure, um, they've never quite let on. But we do know that in nine, uh, 2017, the United States said they were not happy and deeply concerned about the biosecurity of China's establishment in Wuhan uh, that was working on um, biological diseases and that they were worried that it could escape from the research laboratory, whether because it didn't have the correct um, negative uh, atmospheric pressure in its laboratories or whatever the cause. They were concerned about it. Well, that concern seems to have paid off and paid off in spades. We're now looking at a situation where there is a very real prospect of deaths in Britain of between one and two million people. A staggering figure. I hope that we get lucky and it's only going to be a matter of luck and avoid that situation. 
But, as I said at the top of this podcast, I'm really rather pleased with the degree of veracity in all of Richard's and my predictions to date. But we're not pleased with being right, though, Greg, are we? Let's be in, in the sense of we're pleased about the number of deaths. We're, we're just sort of sat here thinking we wish we were grossly wrong but it hasn't panned out to be the case because the last thing i want any of our listeners to think is we would rather be right and there'd be millions of deaths than be wrong and there'd only be 10 uh, or 100 richard richard mere culper mm. um, i assumed we had an intelligent audience yes indeed um i have said all along i hope that i'm wrong mm. But to date, we've proved to be right. Greg, if we do have, for example, one to two million deaths in the United Kingdom, just to put this into perspective, and just working on the assumption that the United States situation is no better or worse than us, with a population of six times, are you suggesting they could have anything from six to 12 million deaths? I would suggest that deaths per million will be slightly lower in America mm -hmm. um, for, for two reasons. One, there's an awful lot of Americans who uh, they wouldn't include in the figures because they would declare them as being uh, illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. uh, but that aside, there are very big rural gaps in America. Diseases like this find it hard to cross um, barren land because they lack the transport they haven't got a person to ride on mm -hmm. so um will this disease disease cross um death valley will it cross um from side to side of um the grand canyon uh, will it go across the great grain lands of central midwest america that we can't define but there are some very large open spaces in america that maybe it's saving grace now greg having said that dr fauci has said that he hopes that the death rate will be contained within 100,000 and potentially, worst case, 200,000. Though he admits, in fairness to him, he admits that nobody really knows. Your figure, I, even... I even, stress. Uh, your figure of, um, for the UK, going back to that, even allowing for the fact the death rate will be lower th than America, can you possibly conceive then that if we do have one to two million deaths, America will only have one to 200,000? Not for a second, but may I point out that A, I'm not a politician. Mm -hmm. B, I'm not making the statements with a view to getting re-elected. Mm -hmm. C, I'm not trying to hang on to my job. Mm -hmm. D, Dr. Faustus or anybody else who makes okay. these yeah. comments, yeah. Um, prefacing it with that they hope they're wrong. We've hoped we were wrong all the time. I wanted to stop yesterday. But yes. we have predicted the possibility, nay, even probability, that we could have between one and two million deaths in this country. Mm -hmm. That is allowing for the fact that, firstly, we have a higher standard of understanding of hygiene. We have very little greater understanding of vaccines when you think how many, just how many years have we been working on trying to produce a vaccine for the common cold? Mm which costs mankind billions every year. With people taking time off work, 
because they've got the common cold badly. We have people making fortunes out of um, vaccines for the flu. I draw your attention um, to the high status of the individuals who distributed Tamiflu on a worldwide basis when it was last year's flu that it was a vaccine against. Not this year's. And I will um, supply Richard with a copy uh, that he can put up on to the website um, of a document from John Hopkins um, outlining, outlining a rather more complex understanding of uh, this virus than many of us may heretofore have had. I'm not saying it's definitive, but John Hopkins is um, a very reputable organization. Um, it's be believed in almost all fields as a, an eminent leader. And this is their output in simple form that any and all of us can understand, not too long, of just what are the pitfalls to this disease? Bear in mind, one in three of the population of London died in the plague of 1665. And the death toll of the flu, the Spanish flu of uh, 1917, 18 and 19, which we never cured, we never found a vaccine for, and it wasn't until about the last 10 or 15 years that we even knew what the virus was. And that was as a result of digging up some graves in permafrost, and then finding that the virus was still live, and burying the bodies a bit damn quickly. <laughs> You know, we don't know what we're doing. One of the greatest problems of this entire situation is the arrogance of man uh, that he fondly imagines that he can change the climate, that he can alter this and alter that and make a huge impact on the planet. We are like a flea climbing an elephant's leg with intent to rape. Our chances of being able to make any of these changes are so minuscule as to be absolutely risible. We can't even get our scientists to tell the truth about the climate we live in. They can't predict what the weather is tomorrow, but they have the arrogance to tell us what's going to happen in 50 years <laughs> when it is patently obvious they haven't got a shred of evidence but they can field a 17 year old with extreme autism and other problems to lecture us on what we should do about it can we have one that will solve um covid19 Please tell me right now what tax I must pay to make COVID-19 go away because governments around the world are convinced but that by taxing everybody, they can make the climate change. How risible is that? And people fall for it. It's quite staggering to well, me. Well, Greg. It's staggering. <laughs> I knew you'd get climate change in there. I just well, it is it is a very dangerous oh. aspect of oh. modern government governance oh. that we are introducing measures pertaining to climate change oh. that will bankrupt oh. mankind, oh. and we don't even know what we're doing it for. Oh. It's a pretense. A total pretense. There is no evidence 
that there is major climate change going on at the moment. Right. Yes, we are moving towards a mini ice age. There's no doubt of that, but you'd never know it from the IPCC report and the comments of the United Nations and the erudite idiots who are our politicians. Greg, finally, before we go, I'm intrigued by this million figure in the United Kingdom. We have 3,000 or nearly 4,000, no, 3,000 deaths so far, did you say? As yeah. I, said, I don't have the figures in front of me. So, and you're predicting it's quite possible it can go to, to a million or even two million. And yet I have in my mind two factors that would work against that. The first, within a month or so, we're going to have warmer weather and it is envisaged that warmer weather will either get rid of to a large degree or at least mitigate this. May I stop you immediately? Yeah, before you do, but also I want to get the two points out. And also Britain is in lockdown. So people are not interacting with one another. So how are we going to get to this million that, that you say is eminently possible? May I stop you at the oh, point I, I should have stopped, I should have insisted. Mm -hmm. We didn't think that the plague would kill one in three. And by the way, are you aware that the plague, the end of it was brought about by the oncoming winter, not by the oncoming summer different viruses different maladies respond differently to different temperatures the important thing is the temperature of the human body that it harbors the virus and human viruses are not stupid they select a human body because it's the right temperature for it to thrive, which is why your immune system, when you get a virus, will push up the temperature by one degree to see if it can kill off the virus. And then it has a day or so of being like that, and it says, oh, that didn't work, and it pushes up the temperature again. And then it says, oh, that didn't work, and eventually, it either kills off the virus because the temperature has gone high enough or the virus kills you mm -hmm. because your temperature went higher. Now, any minute now, they're going to be saying none of these COVID deaths were due to COVID-19. They were due to people having high temperatures. Just as there are countries where they say, no, that heart attack um, it was a heart attack that killed him. So it's just playing with how to lie with statistics. And your second point, Richard, does it still feature? Mm. Well, it does in the sense that if we are not, well, first of all, will the government ever admit that the figures will be 1 million or 2 million based on what you've just no. said, right? No. So we'll never it's be able to prove it. No. But secondly, if we are all stuck in our homes, I still don't see how that interaction would be sufficient to cause that number of deaths. I certainly agree that at a few hundred thousand is certainly not beyond the realms of possibility. But I just think a million's a stretch. Unless, of course, they, they stop the lockdown and allow people back into the community too early. How long do you leave them in lockdown? Mm. How long will the public be prepared to live in lockdown when they realize that they're not dead yet? Mm. So it can't have been that bad. Right. Because the figures aren't very high. Why should we worry about it? And they come out of lockdown and we have a, an entire new resurgence of the disease that kills 
as many people as it did the first time round. The mistake that has been made, if a mistake has been made, has been made based on political expedience. Namely, that politicians were told that it was necessary, I stress necessary, for between 60 and 80% of the population to get COVID-19 in order to establish herd immunity. And it's called herd immunity because um, as any veterinary student or any farmer will tell you, herd immunity is built up when a given percentage of your herd has the immunity that means that whatever it is can't survive based on the balance of the herd. So it was very clearly understood and even discussed in the early days of this uh, that herd immunity was essential. It was then realized in Britain, for instance, that the Labour Party in their total corruption would try to make political capital out of this. And they even went so far as to say that coronavirus would be the saving of the Labour Party because it would mean that they could castigate the government for every aspect of whatever they did to try and counter it. And the, the government realizes it needs to be elected to stay there for the good of the country and for the good of their salary, um, I hasten to add. Therefore, they had better not put themselves in a position where their op opposition could say, well, they deliberately let X number of people die of this. The fact that it may result in yet more people dying because they didn't will not be something they'll be held to account for. And realistically, if you look at the comments that have been coming out of the opposition in Britain pertaining to the government's actions and the uh, aspects of the health service that the government has been controlling, one wonders which is the greater enemy, socialism and the Labour Party in its desperate death throes or COVID-19? Because they are, how do they realistically, I ask the British people and the people of any country around the world that has democratically voted in its government, how would that government have fared in the Second World War if every 10 seconds, minor nobodies from the opposition party had attacked Churchill in support of the Luftwaffe? We would have lost. And to be honest, it's my belief that a great deal of the damage is straight down to Labour, even as it now stands. And on that note, Greg, I think it's a fitting time to end this podcast. Thank you, as always. Until next time. My pleasure. And don't forget, I am not qualified. It is only an experience and an opinion that I'm stating. Much the worse. Watch your hands. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. And we hope you enjoyed that discussion. If you wish to help support this channel, we've placed various Amazon links in the description box below, all of which are self-explanatory. And any purchases from which we shall receive a small commission to help grow the channel further. Meanwhile, please do not forget to subscribe and press the bell sign so that you're notified of any future videos as and when they are published. In addition, we have two complementary channels, the first Illuminati Silver and the second Trump for President 2020. And if either of these are of interest to you, then kindly go over to those 
likewise and subscribe. Until next time.